Hey, Sid, where are we? We are in Dallas for the Visionaries Roundtable. It's uh, one of the roundtables which brings in amazing entrepreneurs and some of the world's leaders for this particular conference. So we are here for this event. What am I excited about? I think uh, the agenda is uh, up to discuss about how organizations are built, exited, how do you grow organizations, culture, and various different topics. It's about entrepreneurship. And I think it is about storytelling as well. How do you build a greater brand? I'm, I'm so excited to see all those amazing people who are here. Some of the people like uh, founders of stamps.com. Yeah. So it's going to be exciting. Awesome. Yeah, let's go. What's your name? I'm, I'm Dr. Sajid Karya. Dr. Sajid. Yeah. And where are you based at? Phoenix, Arizona. Okay. And what do you do? Uh, I am a founder of an IT company. New company. Oh, okay. You run successfully for many years, but I'm it's a new one. Where are you from originally? I'm from Kerala. Kerala? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Trichy. Trichy. I'm from Cochin. Cochin. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Fantastic. And do you teach as well? I do, yes. Okay, you have your own private school or you're teaching? I do have my own private studio and there's a lot of demand in the area. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that's right. Congratulations. journey, entrepreneurial journey in 2007, and uh, we are a technology firm. Three things what we do. Uh, companies want to build software, we provide people. That's one part of our business, which is talent management. The other side is the services, so we build, manage, own, deliver solutions. So you can think about a small version of an Accenture. And the third area is products. So if you're driving a Toyota or Lexus, light here, vintage Broncos, any of these cars, and you're using your phone to open your car, that's our tech, close to about 12 million consumers. But all of this entire journey, I didn't have great credentials like how many degrees and I believe this. I had like a, a very, very lackluster uh, educational background, came from poverty. That's the kind of background where I came from. Originally, where I'm from is a small place called Astrichi in Tamil Nadu in India. Uh, it's a small college town where there was never a large employer. But when I wanted to start this business in 2007, started from... Uh, I, I live in Atlanta, so that's when I thought, okay, we should. I, I wanted to start off doing something from my hometown because it has incredible talent pool. So currently, we are the largest employer in the city. We have uh, close to about 750 people just in that small college town, creating an economic and a social boom, but delivering for Fortune 1,000 customers globally. Uh, so that's the journey where we are, uh, close to about 4,000 people operating in uh, about 14 countries. and. Uh, that's a quick bit about my journey. So the question, the first question for anybody who wants to program is, what are you doing to prepare yourself for te rapid technological changes in your business? So a couple of things, uh, how we are approaching this is uh, uh, with regards to the people, upskilling people, the continuous effort, what we are doing, the moment AI came into existence, in the industry, what we are in, whether it is in product development or services or in talent management, uh, the key is about uh, retraining people as quickly as possible to start utilizing uh, AI tools or tools which can help the, help improve productivity. 
The other way, one of the key things what we are doing is we are looking at what are the products which are already available in the marketplace and start using those products or at least evaluating those products to see if it is really creating any impact at all. Because there's a lot of buzz what we generally hear in the marketplace um, about AI really creating a true impact. A lot of companies have not put it to their mainstream of work actually it is majority of the um, majority of the work which has been done by even large corporations is on POCs there's not really taken to a full-fledged implementation which has completely transformed the organization that's not what we see but again uh, TCS announced uh, the, their Q1 results they said they made about 900 million in terms of bookings just on uh, AI gen uh, gen AI POCs it's not full-fledged implementation. So that's where it is at this point in time. So where we are putting our efforts is on evaluating various different tools from the marketplace, building some internal tools to uh, improve our uh, productivity. And the third is helping our talent upskill. Okay. Those are the three areas. And I think uh, the, the dangers with AI coming into play is more around fraud and synthetic identity usage. Right. Um, technically, you can get onto DALI or ChatGPT and ask them to replicate a particular, uh, uh, create a new face altogether. And uh, those are the challenges what I see. Uh, but there is going to be tech which is going to be helping prevent that as well. So with the evolution, with more debt, with more threats of this nature, with synthetic identities coming in, there will be more technologies which will be there to prevent those as well. Talking specifically about uh, kids' education, this is one of the questions which uh, I get uh, asked quite a lot by, uh, because the audience which I address to is a lot of teacher, teaching community as well globally. Uh, teachers ask this question, hey, because in the US, there's a, there's a lot of usage of ChatGPT by the kids and the uh, and the teaching community, but worldwide, globally, teachers have access to it. Students do not have access to uh, ChatGPT in a lot of places because they don't have computer access at all. Uh, so the question is, like, for them, the question is, hey, how can we get ChatGPT introduced to the kids where kids can have access to it and they can get to adapt to the, the modern world as to what is going on? Um, so my take, first of all, from your question is, uh, how do we educate kids? Um, the, the norm today, what we are talking about is the usage of mobile phones in, the, in schools. Uh, there's uh, teachers are, or the, the schools are generally um, a little taken aback by the cell phone usage by the student community, specifically during the classroom sessions and things like that. So the, the uh, best way, or at least the recommendation by psychologists is that start introducing only after middle school uh, the usage of cell phones. So we could utilize the same concept going back to kids as well. Like up until the they complete middle school, if we can curtail to a certain extent the utilization of mobile tech and any of the internet-based connectivity tools or chat GPTs, I think it will give them some amount of sanity as they get into high school.